Welcome back to the four main stages of SOLIDWORKS model based definition. In this tutorial, we'll be discussing part four, the publishing and finalization stage of our 3D PDF. To recap the MBD workflow so far, in part one, we discussed the definition stage in which we added PMI to our model. In part two, we organized that PMI and created our 3D views. In part three, we created our custom 3D PDF template and lastly, in part four, we will be publishing the model to the custom template that we created. The publishing phase of the MBD workflow is the shortest step of them all. SOLIDWORKS model-based definition has many features embedded into the publishing process to help select views, control accuracy, attach files, create step 242s, add custom properties, and bill of materials. To activate the publishing menu, select Publish 3D PDF from the MBD Command Manager. From here, you can see the property manager that appears. The first step to publishing your 3D PDF is selecting the right template. If the file location was routed correctly, your new custom template should appear here. It will appear alongside the current default templates for 3D PDF publishing. Once the template is selected, we have two options to add views to the PDF. We can choose to include any primary views if desired. These are not related to 3D views at all. They are standard views of the model according to the planes that it is located on. The second option is more views. Here is where the 3D views that are seen below can be selected. Just control select all the desired views. Once the views are selected, we need to select our accuracy control. This is one of the most important aspects of publishing the 3D PDF. SOLIDWORKS MBD offers a compression option which can greatly reduce the file size, allowing the 3D PDF to be easily emailed or sent to others. The maximum option is best for accuracy, but will be a larger file. If we choose the low accuracy, the PDF will appear the same, but graphically be slightly different in a much smaller file size. I will choose the maximum accuracy for this publish. From here, we can choose the individual view to be assigned to our independent viewports. When a template contains multiple independent viewports, this view will populate all of them, but can be altered and saved from within the published document, which I'll demonstrate later in this video. Let's attach the assembly to our 3D PDF. This way our documentation and CAD files are all stored in one place. The 3D PDF publisher even has an option to automatically create and attach a STEP 242 file. On the top right hand corner of the published to 3D PDF property manager, there is a blue arrow that brings the user to page 2 of the publishing options. Here we can control the input of our bill of materials and custom properties. Now remember in part 3 when we inserted the custom property placeholders and text areas into our custom PDF template? Here is where we insert the values into those placeholders. Select the output text option and use the drop down menus to insert the desired custom property. For the text field we can simply type in the value. Notice how when I first opened the output text menu that some fields were pre-populated. This is because in part 3 we named our custom property placeholders exactly the same as our custom properties in SOLIDWORKS. If the names are exact, SOLIDWORKS automatically populates the field for you. Once we are all set and have adjusted settings for publishing, click OK. A dialog now appears and just simply select the save location and check this box to open the PDF once done publishing and click OK. The actual publishing process only takes a few moments and once it is complete the PDF will automatically open. The PDF is published and looks identical to our 3D PDF template but now has the viewports, text areas and thumbnail area populated with the model. If we scroll to page 2 we can cycle through the 3D views using the thumbnail area. When a viewport is hovered over or selected, the heads up toolbar appears. Here we can change perspective, background color, and display style. On page 3 of the PDF, we can see that our bill of materials has been properly transferred to the published result. The bill of materials and viewport are associated with cross highlighting. If I select an item in the bill of materials, the corresponding item is highlighted in the viewport and vice versa. If I select an item in the viewport, it will highlight in the bill of materials.
If we scroll to the last and final page, we can see the overlapping items on top of the viewport. The large scale viewport shows off the model much clearer than any 2D drawing. Notice the bill of material also has cross highlighting like before. The last step of the process is to add any comments if necessary and then finally save my PDF and it's ready for the outside world. Thank you for watching the four part video series covering the MBD workflow and everything you need to know in between.